She was stunning, vivacious, a beautiful young woman with a promising career in the spotlight. At 25, Katie Piper truly had it all. Katie even thought she might have found love, but she soon discovered her new romance was a dangerous, controlling man. And when she tried to leave him, her life changed forever. First, her jilted boyfriend violently raped her. Then he devised the most appalling revenge of all, an acid attack that would destroy Katie's face and her future. Katie will never again look like she once did, but after 32 operations and months of painful rehabilitation, this remarkable woman has a new face and a new insight into what it really means to be beautiful. So Katie, when you look in the mirror, mm. what do you see? I see a face that tells a story. Um, Viciously attacked with acid, Katie Piper's story is a harrowing and heartbreaking one. Do you ever yearn for the Katie of old? I do look back and it's like a bereavement and one that I can cope with and one that I can deal with. So maybe I feel sad, but that sadness doesn't overcome me and make me feel distraught. Katie's face was her future. A model and TV presenter, the 25-year-old Londoner was a girl used to being noticed. But in March last year, as captured by this CCTV footage, sulfuric acid was thrown in Katie's face, destroying it forever. A lot of the publicity around me has been headlines of, you know, a beautiful girl lost her face and is now scarred for life. And yes, that's really hard, but that's not the worst thing about this attack. It goes deeper than that. It's about destroying who you are as a person and how you lived your life and all the things you could do. It's not just my face that was stolen. It's my, my identity, it, Katie, the person. Everything was taken away from me. But this is also a story of discovery and an incredible medical breakthrough that not only rebuilt Katie's face, but also helped redefine her life. She's found an inner strength that makes her far more beautiful than she ever was. I'll have days when my appearance gets me down more than others, but I'll always try and tell myself, well, stop being so shallow because you're lucky that you have your eyes in the right place. You can see, you've got a nose, a lip, lips, you know. I can walk, I can talk, so I'll try and be grateful for what I've got. This is the man who tried to destroy Katie's life, 33-year-old Danny Lynch, whom she'd met and began dating through Facebook just two weeks earlier. After sort of the brief two weeks, I started to think, I don't think we've got a lot in common. He's not really the person I thought he was. And then that's when I tried to back away. As you tried to back away, what did he do? He took it as an insult and became very angry. Danny violently raped Katie for eight hours and threatened to kill her. And he wanted to hang me and slash my face with a razor blade and he was, he was just like a monster unleashed. He was just, not, not just violent, but he was unhinged because he was violent one minute, then he was crying the next minute. So how did you escape? And he started saying to me, had he messed things up between us, had he lost me forever? And I didn't want to die, and I knew I had to try and appeal to this side of him and convince him, no, it's fine, I forgive you, let's leave this place together, no one has to know. Katie escaped to her own apartment and locked herself away for the weekend, but Danny called constantly, begging her to check her emails at a nearby internet cafe. She was terrified of what he would do if she ignored him. What made you leave the apartment that day? He said to me, OK, I understand that um, I've hurt you and I'm going to leave you alone forever if you go and check this one message. She agreed to go to the cafe. Over and over, Danny called to check exactly where she was and what she was wearing. Little did she know he was tracking her movements because he'd enlisted his friend, Stefan Silvestre, to attack her. It was broad daylight in what seems to be a pretty safe area. Katie was completely and understandably unsuspecting. 
A man walked towards her, his arms were outstretched, holding a cup. She thought he was begging. As she rummaged through her bag looking for money for him, he threw what turned out to be sulfuric acid all over her face. It's hard to imagine a more horrific or cowardly attack. I was on the phone to Danny and I just put the phone like this and I had my bag like this and I leaned like this side of my face, all like this, and went to get the money. And as I did, he got really like this close to me and said something to me, then just threw it all over me. I was just... And Danny stayed on the phone and listened the whole time. He never hung up. When the acid hit your face, do you remember what you felt? Yeah, I was just burning. I was burning really badly and I remember thinking, maybe he's just flicked a match at me and it was head to toe pain and heat and I knew my face was falling off and my, my vision started to deteriorate and I remember hearing like this really, really loud noise and it was like all of my ear was coming off and, and really hurting and there was the, no the noise was so loud and it was really hurting me and I, I remember thinking, I, I wish the noise would stop. And then I realised it was my voice screaming and screaming. When you saw her lying in hospital? Mm. There was just a person in this intensive care unit with a doctor washing her face, pouring water onto her face. Her face was swollen, orange, black. She had a tube in her mouth. Her tongue was so swollen it couldn't fit in her mouth. And her eyes were welded and together. Her eyes were welded together. She was totally unrecognisable. The acid had burnt through all the layers of Katie's skin. She had fourth degree burns and was blind in her left eye. You're only supposed to have one at a time because always you have a bit too many, won't you? Doctors couldn't even tell Diane and David if their daughter would survive. In those early days, she didn't want to. She wrote things on this um, clipboard they'd given her, things like, am I blind? Where am I? Am I dead? Help me, I can't breathe. Um, oh, she used to sort of put her hand up to our face and she could, you know, she'd write, don't cry, and, th and I'm sorry. And then she wrote, kill me, because I think she realised what a terrible predicament she was in. What Katie didn't know was she was in the hands of the best reconstructive surgeon in the country. What I wanted to do was preserve as much as healthy tissue if it was there. Was there much there? Unfortunately not. For six hours, Dr Mohammed Jawad led a team of eight trying to save Katie's face. In the end, they had to remove most of it and start again. In a single operation, they built a brand new face using synthetic skin and skin grafts from Katie's back. It's a world first, but what Katie saw in those early days repulsed her. When you looked in the mirror for the first time, what was your reaction? Why is my reflection not there? <laughs> Didn't even look like a man or a woman or adult or a child. It was just like a corpse. There was times I'd catch my own reflection and it would startle me and then I'd think, well, if my own reflection shocks me, what does it do to other people? And I've always wanted to get married and have children, and, and to me that was like would be quite a big part purpose to my life. And I remember thinking, you know, nobody's ever going to want to be with me. So really, what is the point in going on? And, and I'm just going to be a burden on my family. And, and there was times when I found it really hard, really difficult. <laughs> but Katie did find a way to go on. In the last 18 months, she's rediscovered her sense of humour. These are quite heavy, aren't they? How funny is this, how much my life has changed? I now have more medical supplies than ID shoes and handbags. Yep. Wearing a plastic pressure mask 23 hours a day isn't funny, nor are the 32 operations she's since had. But her mum and dad have helped her get through the tough times. Well, I do understand. And I think you're being really, really brave. Okay. 
<laughs> but perhaps her greatest rehabilitation is seeing her attackers in jail. Both got life sentences. And Danny Lynch was also convicted of raping Katie. Oh my gosh. News delivered by her dad. Yeah, okay, all right, I'll speak to you later. All right, bye. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm so surprised. I'm just like, I'm actually so shocked. I can't what was that moment like? It's just overjoyed. Because I was so worried that he would be able to be released and kill me. And it was just relief for it, a massive relief. It really was. Yeah. <laughs> Do you hate him? Yeah. And I think I always will. Mm. I find it very hard to call him by his name because that makes him human by, by naming him. And to me, he's not human. He doesn't deserve a name. You know, he's just the man that attacked Kate. This is what I sleep in at night. It's made out of special material. I'll put it on. <laughs> There are the physical scars, and then there's the psychological trauma of what Katie's been through, and sleep offers no protection. I think the hardest part would be feeling like a child again, losing your independence, moving back home, not being able to work, just the daily things that an adult would probably take for granted. And we do have fun together. Oh, yeah. I do annoy you sometimes, you so do, I don't know. Yeah, I annoy you, <laughs> don't I? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Home with her parents is still the safest place for Katie. She moved here from hospital, and it's only now, a year and a half after the attack, she feels slightly more comfortable venturing out. That's sad, isn't it? It's got better. And I do go out more. But I take the dog with me. Um, but I wouldn't walk the dog alone. Like, I'm with you. So Her attacker okay. may be in jail, oh, but Katie's God, greatest God. fear is she'll be targeted again. So there is a part of you that is still scared? Yes, there is. But I'd rather be scared than risk getting attacked again, because I, I couldn't go through that again. Katie's also anxious about people's reactions when they see her new face, and I rightly so, going on past experiences. People said things to me and laughed at me, and um, more so younger people and children followed me around if I went out and things like that. So That must have been hard. Yeah, it was difficult, but I, I can understand why, because it's a strange... Will there be a day when Katie will be scar-free? She will always have scars, um, but um, there's no reason why she should not achieve the Katie which she was. Not necessarily in 100%. I think even if you get 90, 95%, I think it would be a great breakthrough. 90, 95%? I That's think what so. She was. Let's have a look. Do you mind taking your mask off, please? Now, you've been wearing this mask also for nearly over a year. Katie's progress so far is quite extraordinary, but she has another six months of wearing this mask, which helps flatten out the scars, and there's more surgery to come on her cheeks and nose. I want to restore a good quality of life. I want to be able to shout and laugh and my face to feel loose and, and moist. And that's what's important for me, not restoring what you know society says is beautiful. Because I feel beautiful. <laughs> you are beautiful. She is beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> when you look at her, do you see the, the daughter you raised and love? I do. I do sometimes, if I was honest, I do sometimes get a bit of a pang when I look at her because I remembered what she look, used to look like, what she should look like. And sometimes I do think it's not right that you don't look like that. I feel the opposite. I, I actually think it was always Kate because even in hospital with no face, she was still joking and still saying daft things that I'd expect her to say. And I look at her now and I think, it doesn't matter, it's, it's still her. Whatever he's tried to do to her, he's not won because 
it's still her. I, I just scrammed my head one more time. <laughs> no, you don't need to. Your head is no just doubt Katie's life this. has changed, but perhaps surprisingly, not, not for the worse. <laughs> Every day she looks more like the Katie of old, but she is a new woman, in her opinion, a better one, more tolerant and happier, and now able to face the world. I've lived two very extremes in life. I've lived a life where people wolf whistle at me and men gave me their seat on the tube and women were jealous of me and I had that life for a few years. And then I walked on the other side, the total extreme, to where people were disgusted by my appearance. People were scared to get in a lift with me. It made me think, this is crazy. Why, how can society perceive me like this? Why do people discriminate against me? I need to do something about this. Oh my gosh, I feel like a little bit like before. <laughs> I want to show people that, big or small, you can get through anything in life if you stick at it and don't let things destroy you. You know, like the human spirit is an amazing thing. And with positivity, I believe you can get through adversity. Hello, I'm Nick McKenzie. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. Don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.